I'm Terry Irwin. When Steve and I filmed our first episode of The Crocodile Hunter, never in our wildest dreams did we think it would become a worldwide phenomenon. G'day and welcome. Every time I hear his voice, I see the shows. It just takes me back <laughs> to such a fun time. What do you enjoy about these shows? I love seeing Steve firstly. We're gonna be capturing one of the rarest crocodiles in the world. The second thing is, of course, I get to see myself young, so it's pretty cool. Wes and I love this episode because we get to see Steve in full-on conservation mode, singularly focused on saving two crocodiles from horrible living conditions. He's been in that concrete box for over 13 years. Watch with us as we share memories of Crocodiles of the Revolution. Scene one, take one, and someone goes, Mark. Mark. War. Human life is very valuable. During a war, it's not only the people that suffer, it's also the land and its wildlife that suffers a terrible blow. The Australian Armed Forces led an international peacekeeping force to stop the bloodshed in one of Australia's closest neighbours, East Timor. Aussie soldiers are affectionately known as diggers and they work quickly and effectively to sort the country out. This is Dili. Used to be a thriving metropolis, the biggest city of East Timor. Now it's just a giant chunk of rubble. I'm here to help the most sacred of animals here on East Timor, right at that church. When the army discovered the plight of two crocodiles needing help, they contacted the World Society for the Protection of Animals. WISPA, as they're known, contacted Steve immediately, knowing that the team at Australia Zoo would be the only ones with the expertise to carry out this mission. The army dropped me straight at the church where the biggest of the two crocodiles that we have to restrain was living in atrocious conditions. By crikey, I've seen some hardcore bad husbandry of crocodiles before, but this takes the cake. He was over 11 feet long in an eight foot long concrete box with wire over it. And that was bad enough. The East Timorese people don't understand crocodilian husbandry. They love their crocodiles. In fact, they believe that their island of Timor is actually a solidified crocodile. There's so much consideration given, deservedly, for humanitarian aid. And there's a tendency to forget about animals and wildlife. And I just felt so sorry for him. He was such a big, beautiful animal, and he'd spent his whole life in that box from the time he was this big. So it was just heart-wrenching. They're stuck in this horrific prison with just rancid water and horrible living conditions, and you just wouldn't want to do that to any animal. No. Now for the other one. Have a look at this for appalling conditions. This poor female nine-footer is housed in a bacteria backwash. Over the last few hundred days we've been looking after, yeah. and she's come good. She also had a tyre around her neck. We managed to get that off with a long piece of bamboo. So. Like a car tyre? It was a bicycle tyre. Oh, so my it was, word. It was right around her neck. Yeah, so we got that off her. She's been tortured and injured. Looks like she's blind in this eye. Yeah, I think she's been poked. The other eye looks good and bright. Yeah, last time we've seen her being stabbed. Or yeah, something there's in this been eye. every time you come in here, there's sticks in here. The people have been whacking her. Yeah, the most dangerous thing is going to be the water. Um, any cuts, open wounds you got, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. So I wouldn't mind getting her rather than hitting her in there, because crikey, I don't know what kind of bacteria and disease you're running up against there. Get her out here on the dry ground, and then we'll jump up straight into the ocean. All of us, straight in. This beautiful little female crocodile has been living in these conditions for years. Up here in the Timorese highlands, there's a real serenity and tranquility. Down there in Dili is turmoil and pain. It's quite hard to see it from here. 
But what you can get the gist of from right up here is that Timor is right at the end of the Indonesian archipelago. You can see another island out there, another volcanic island, just like this one. And so East Timor was Portugal territory up until 1975. And then they moved out, Indonesia took it over. However, the East Timorese didn't accept that. And so there's been quite a strong guerrilla movement for well over 20 years. Tens of thousands of refugees suffered for long periods of time. And now it's all starting to get back together. At Australia Zoo, we respond to situations of disaster, war, weather, um, situations where animals might be in need. Yeah, all over the world, when people have troubles with crocodiles, um, we can be there in a, in a heartbeat, especially the really remote areas where people don't have much experience with working around crocodiles. But when the government calls and says, the military are in this area and they've seen this situation and can you help? That's when we yeah. respond. This is the piece of land right behind the church that was graciously donated to house our crocodiles. Wes has his work cut out for him. What he's got to work with is basically a pile of rubble. The whole area in Dili has been under siege in a war-torn situation. What hasn't been leveled has been burned. Now he's got to start from scratch, and all of the workers have to come up with their own devices for building because there's no businesses open. There aren't contractors or concrete workers. There's not even a bank open. This is innovation at its greatest. We get wire where we can. They're mixing concrete out of the rivers. We're doing what we've got to do to build a state-of-the-art crocodile facility. It's looking great. We've got one ready to fill up. This will be for the girl, Maxine. Best swimming pool in Dilly. Woo! See, that's what you and Steve were always good at. I would look at a pile of rubble and go, Darn, that's a pile of rubble. And you envision this beautiful blue pond. It was pretty funny. We imported, like, four tonnes of equipment that we got on a boat out of Darwin, got it across, and, I mean, no one was getting anything into the country at the time. Then we couldn't get concrete, so we actually all had to go down and make a sieve and actually sieve the sand, mix the concrete ourselves, and put the aggregate in. It was unbelievable that we pulled it off. That's unreal. Because yeah. I remember that there was nothing happening. So not a single humanitarian aid no. construction project had started. No, and we went in and we built this and we got it done and we got out. It was pretty amazing. That's remarkable. Brian is our curator of crocodiles, and not only is he cutting an opening to let Maxine come through, but he also knows how important it is to clear all the debris away. Rocks, glass, wire, everything must be removed so that when she's dragged from her enclosure, she doesn't hurt her soft underbelly. I'd say we get two on. Yep. You guys are the first two on, yep. followed by... Um, Bruce and Kevy behind you, but just watch out falling over each other. Yeah. Because uh, she's still big enough and ugly enough to break your legs. She yeah. probably, and a few stitches, but not too bad. The first job is secure a top jaw rope. Stick. Hi, sweetheart. You're all right. OK, so her teeth aren't really good. No. OK. Okay, bite, sweetheart. Bite. There's a girl. Oh, there's a girl. She should be fighting and biting ferociously. Most of her teeth have been smashed out of her head. The second top jaw rope goes on good. Secured. Okay. She's ready to go. Yeah. I think we've got a winner. Yeah. Stay in time. Now. She's going. Not yet. Okay, we ready to go? Don't curl the rope around your hands and a nice steady pace all the way. But if I say stop, stop, because she's got her jaw hooked up. Okay, let's go. That's it. Fight, girl, fight. Oh! She death rolls. This is great. Now I have to pick my moment to jump on her head. Let's not squash you too much. Okay. 
I'm gonna scoot out from under your wezo. Okay. People, power, and speed is everything. We've got our jaws together, we're safe. And she's not fighting. Just keep, 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 keep. I wanna take her to the ocean and give her a scrub. You smell that? Yeah. That is not good. Good on you, Digger. <laughs> Okay. A canvas blindfold to subdue her is highly necessary. The Australian diggers, they take this very seriously. And it's only because of them that she's still alive. We're going on the back of that pile. Okay. Stop the ramp. Yep, give it a fair. Yeah, right, let's go. Okay, put some weight on. Get the weight on. Keep it in. Okay, now just hold on. Yep. For a minute. Yep. Okay. We're good. Right, swing around. Yeah, we're good, mate. Go. How cool is it having, like, diggers just throwing themselves at these crocodiles? <laughs> it's really, really good. I mean, really good. Oh, this is excellent. The one luxury we've got with the Australian Army present is that we've got plenty of people power. With this final hurdle over the wall, she'll be close to the ocean, close enough for a complete veterinary check and a good scrubbing. It's absolutely essential that the years of slime and bacteria and decay are cleaned off her body from head to toe. Not only do we want to make sure she's clean, but also to check out any wounds. So what we'll do is we'll get it totally satched. We want to make sure to check that there aren't any terrible injuries on her as well, because they may require special treatment. The pond that she was living in was absolutely atrocious. Her pond was so full of debris, dead dog bodies, carcasses, all kinds of contaminated body parts, gruesome, awful things. She couldn't even submerge all the way under the water. Let me get this canvas off yep. and ready. Okay, here we go. You, you got, got it, you got it. Right okay. so she's you got fine. it. The salt water is the best thing to clean her with. I just need to debridle these teeth a little. It's nature's way of getting rid of all the bacteria and contamination. Can you, can you lift her head up? Up, 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 up. What worries me the most is her teeth, her head, and her eyes. They're very bulgy. No matter how much time we take cleaning her and making sure that she's physically as healthy as possible, only time will heal her mental scars, her psychological damage. Hey, they're looking good. You can see these ones, these new ones, they're coming through, which is excellent. And there's a whole stack of infection that's popping out. Beautiful blood, so we get straight back to the veins. Clean it up really good. You can see these hips around her head. And just watch your eyes. Really bulging. Thank goodness for the diggers, eh? They've saved her life, no doubt about it. She'd have been dead. Um, I'm happy. You guys? For years, she's been tortured and teased, and people have done cruel and horrible things to her. We'll make sure she's got an enclosure that protects her from the people and the people from her. Let's uh, swing around. Let's go head first. Oh, you go around. Right, the bait will fail. Shut up here. Yep. Wait on that draw rope. Watch your legs. There's a lot more to shifting a crocodile than meets the eye. 
We've got to be completely conscious of where her legs are. Don't tie them up, just hold them back. They flap back up against their body in the swimming posture. We've got to watch out for her eyes, her nostrils, what little amount of teeth she's got left. In the tail, the strength that she derives from the tail, it's important that as many people as that can possibly fit in grab hold of that muscular tail. Crikey, we've gained quite an audience. The local peoples have come in their droves. They love their crocs. Here we go, into a new swimming pool where she can submerge. Blindfolds off. Now all I gotta do is get the top jaw ropes off and she'll be free to swim. Zip out, mate. One down, one to go. Moment of truth. Here we go. One more two. Okay, there's no ropes on her. Huh? Ready? Go. Half the team get off. Oh, she's disorientated. She's going the crowd. This is not good. Swim in and submerge. Very good. Good work, blokes. Woo! Let's, let's clear out. Let's clear out. We're going to give her some space so she can settle in. One down and one to go. Even getting water, one of the easiest resources to tap into in the tropics, was a real tough time. We wanted beautiful, clean, pristine water. Nothing but the best for the kings of East Timor. And all that time, the big male we've nicknamed Anthony is looking on with the other East Timorese locals. And everyone can sense there's a big storm brewing. So given the, um, how tight it is, I don't think that we should make a call on exactly how we're going to manoeuvre him out of there till we get a top jaw rope on yep. and then see if we can get that slip knot over his jaws and pull them together. Right. See how he's going to react to a top jaw rope first and then make the call on where we go from there. The crowd has grown huge. They're even hanging in the trees, and the Australian Armed Forces is there for security. Let's clear this roof nice off and first. get this stuff off so we don't. Yeah. Ooh, look at him. He already knows something's on. He's big and he's agitated. We've got to be really careful and place our hands in exactly the right positions. This crocodile is on and he'll bite out at any given opportunity. He's going into a submerge. We've got to try and get all that wire and bracing off as quick as possible. 
Bear in mind, a crocodile has the capacity to explode out of the water so hard and so fast that it can get its whole body length up out of the water in a blink of an eye. Luckily, he's submerged, giving us enough time to get all his steel work yep. off. Yep. Now things get really interesting. With no steel work left up, the crocodile has every opportunity to make his move. He's being very good. They can lunge with such lightning speed that he grabbed one of us by the upper torso, bring us in poppers like a watermelon. Okay, let's clear this rubble out. Okay, if we call it, just run. Just back up. Don't worry about your cameras. Don't worry about anything. If he comes out, he's going to bite the first thing that comes close enough to his head. So if I call it, just back off. Really quickly. You'd think it would be enough that Steve has to consider moving this giant crocodile, but he also has the safety of the crew, the onlookers, and the Australian diggers to think about as well. There's a lot of people around, and things will happen really fast. Holy dooly. That was one of the scariest crocodiles I've ever caught and moved in my life. Yeah. Because when we cut, we had to actually hacksaw and cut out that big piece of steel, and once it come off, he could just come straight out. Yeah. So it was all or nothing. And don't you love his temperament compared to her? Yep, he was on fire. And big, and big, heavy animal too. He was, oh, he was beautiful, but a little naughty. He was like, everyone's been really hard on him and now I'm getting even. Instead of, she was like, everyone's been hard on me and I just want to hide. Yeah. He was like, no, I've st I'm still going to take you out. juggle the top jaw rope on now. I guess we should. We should, yeah. Let's just see what happens when we take It doesn't get any tenser than this. Here's a huge croc in a very confined space. Okay, start dumping the water out, Brian. Okay. Steady, Steve-o. Total danger, working above him in such close proximity. One thrash of his teeth and it'll be all over. So far so good, he's taken it in his stride. Comes the second top jaw rope for safety. He's building up. He flicked the second one off. We've got to go again. Easy, Steve. Being pretty good because he hasn't felt the tension on the ropes yet, but as soon as he does, he's gonna go off the Richter scale. This is it. He can feel the ropes. There's a minimal amount of weight to hand on it. Okay. It's not I'm gonna go for both Wes. Get this one on first. Okay. Um working this close to a crocodile is a little bit like being on the bomb squad. It's only through Steve's years of experience and instinct that he's able to work with this proximity to this crocodile. Watch out, Kip. Back up. Watch out. Back off, back off. You might come up and over. Want a bit of slack on the word? Yep. He's hit that hard, he smashed the concrete and split it. Now he's getting really angry. 
extreme danger. Okay, I'm going to give it one almighty jerk. Yep. I tell you what, I might have... He's getting angrier and angrier. I'm going to try and juggle a rope onto his bottom jaw. Water's draining out pretty quickly. He's nearly got a complete purchase with all four feet. Crikey, if only I could get those jaws together. I use sticks because he can bite down and chew them and it won't hurt his teeth. Steve's got a good team from Australia Zoo backing him up who know without saying a word exactly what needs to be done. For many years, Steve's been catching crocodiles on his own, but now he's got help and he's using every bit of it. Stick. Someone take a bit of weight on that. That's pretty much. Just a bit of weight on that, Ronnie. Get the hold of it. ready. Okay. Let it go. this with, pull him up tight, and then I'll, um, you guys can hold him, I'll try and lash him. How about that canvas bag? If you have him up tight enough, I think we can do it. This is so frustrating for Steve. He feels a real sense of urgency because crocodiles tire and stress more quickly than other animals. He's got to hurry and get this croc out and into his new pond as fast as possible. <laughs> okay. He's going off. I can't take it anymore. I'm gonna go in. We can't hold him. I'm going in. Have a look at the size of that head. 3,000 pounds per square inch. One mistake and I'm just a big patch of ooze. Give me a bit of rope. Keep it up. He's tight, real tight. This is the most dangerous part of the whole operation. In such close proximity, Steve's just giving it all to protect this crocodile. If he rolls, Steve's had it. He's gonna go. He nearly snapped me arm. He's breaking me up. There's nothing Steve can do now. He's got to hang on. He's got to hope for his backup. Here comes Wes.
You know how I said that it's one of the most dangerous things I've ever done? It's a lot more dangerous than Steve. <laughs> because for him to get in there at that point was one of the most gutsiest things I've ever seen. And you know where he did it? He did it for the croc. No, he really liked that crocodile. He loved that it. crocodile. He didn't want him to keep death rolling on that sharp concrete. So yeah. he just put his own body on the line to protect it. I mean, and he does it. He did it all the time. And then later he could have shoulder surgery. Oh, that completely... Just ripped everything ripped out. Ripped his shoulder out. I bet you woke up the next morning and went, <laughs> why can't I breathe? Oh, that is... How strong was that croc? But it blows me away that he would get in that... Because the jaws were open. Yeah. And just... Oh. And when you watch it, you just want to climb in and help lift. Mm. You just want to give you a hand. And even when he wrapped it, his jaws weren't tight no. because the he didn't have time to get the rope, so he just went. He wrapped it and just went right. Yeah. And no matter what, you know, when Steve gets the head, no matter what, he ain't letting go. No, hey, that was safely. scary. When you finally got to ground, then you could breathe. Oh, <laughs> unbelievable! That was unbelievable. slacking off in less than half a second. Once we've got the people pressure on, we've got to keep moving and move quick. Lucky enough, the blind folds on and we've got to get enough ropes around his head that we can secure him and get him to his new pond as quick as possible. Every single second, he's building lactic acid into his blood system, which could become fatal unless we move quick. Yeah. Got it? Yep, got it. Okay, we're going up, we're going into the shade. Right, yeah. You get on this side. The rest of you guys go to the other side. Okay, let's go up. Now they've got to move really quickly because it's hot, the crocodile's out of the water and he's stressing out. Go, blokes, go. This crocodile weighs well over 600 pounds, and it's no small feat moving him. Luckily, it wasn't a long walk to his new pond. Now, the second half of the move begins. good for the morale of the people. It's the first sign of reconstruction, of rebuilding their city. This crocodile rescue is such a positive move. Dazed and shocked. I'm gonna have to show him the water. So I'm going in. Come on, boy. Come on, mate. Here's your water. Here's your water. Here's your water. He's so confused, I'm trying to show him where the water is so as he can get himself orientated. Here's a crocodile that's never felt land under his feet, never walked, never run, never used his legs. He's well and truly with it. See his eyes, pupils are good, the slit's moving at me. He's watching, saw his little feet tense up a bit. I'm really excited. He knows what's on. He can sense the water. He's good, he's good. Just a matter of time now. Oh gosh, I feel so sorry for him. But he's in good condition, striking condition. 
see those big, deep breaths. He's trying to recuperate. He's got a massive lacta lactic acid buildup throughout his muscles, and they have a lot of trouble um, getting it back out of their system. It's like amino acids is like uh, getting a cramp. If I get a cramp, so his whole body will be suffering. A whole big mass of lactic acid. But the most important thing is he's never walked. He's never actually got on all four legs and walked before, and now he has to walk into the pond and he'll be in massive sensory overload. He's been in that concrete box for over 13 years. And so you can imagine trapped in a small dungeon-like structure, he'd be a little bit nuts. I can't believe that then you picked that guy up. I know, you can see all of us, red-faced, trying to get him out. Because it's hot and he's heavy and he's been struggling and you're spent. Yeah, we were spent. I was actually completely spent because we hung on for so long and so hard and there was no top jaw rope on, so you're just hanging, hanging, hanging. And then everyone in the crowd went crazy. There were like 500 people and then, so when we got the vehicles back, that all jumped on the vehicle and put giant dints in all the vehicles. They got so excited. It was so amazing. People were so excited that we'd actually saved this crocodile. That's really you know, special. Incredible. He's coming round. Now I've got to go one on one and try and get him orientated and back in the water. This won't be easy. You can imagine the hatred he's got for me. He's tired, battered, and bruised. His eyes are big. He's having trouble walking. This is the first time in his life he's walked. Up that way, that way. Come on now. You know where you gotta go. Come on now, walk. Look big, Rhino, look big. Walk. Other way, other way, other way. Has anyone got a stick on that rope? That's annoying. Come on, Tony. He's body weight on are free, but he doesn't want to go in. Come on, Tony, push. He's Come totally on. disorientated. Okay, push. This is a little risky. Push. Come on, Tony. Come on, Tony. But he doesn't look like he's going to strike at us. This is not working. I'm going to have to top jaw rope him as quick as I can and try and pull him into the water. Unless he goes into the water, he hasn't got a chance. Okay, wait, wait, wait. He's got his eyes shut. Let's go, Brino, up into position. Wait. He's got his eyes shut. We're going to make this happen really quick. Okay, you ready, Brino? Okay, go! We pull, they push. Come on, big fella. Look at him, he's tired. Gotta juggle this top jaw rope off and he's free to go. This is really tricky. On land, he's quite slow and cumbersome. But in the water, it's his territory. And Steve's sharing it with him. That's it, the rope's off. I'm out of there. It's the death roll of freedom. And the East Timorese people feel it. Now 
he can swim and do all of the natural things a crocodile should do. <laughs> Here he is, the apex predator, the largest reptile species in our world and on the island of Timor. This has been a total success. We've got a few more finishing touches to do with his enclosure. We've got our new ranger up and running. It's mission accomplished, and what a fine mission. We came here a little bit sad, a little bit disorientated, but it's all just meshed into place. If we can look after the apex predators in our world, then everything will flourish, including humanity. I loved everybody getting so enthusiastic about it. Here are people who are not all readily conservation-minded, you know? That's not top of their list when their houses are all blown up, and yet they're cheering for saving these crocs, so. I think that was my favorite part of the whole thing. Yeah, that is very awesome. And another exciting thing about the whole thing is that East Timor is actually their sacred animal is the crocodile. And the actual island itself looks like a crocodile coming out of the water. That's right. Yeah. I've forgotten about that. Yeah, You're right. So we not only saved an animal, but we also um, kept the, you know, the totem animal for those people um, alive and well as well.